Albion Online is a sandbox MMORPG with a classless system, full loot PvP zones, and holds the title as one of the biggest and best sandbox MMOs in the genre. Where lots of other games like this slowly fail and the player count slowly dwindles, this one is seeing a rise. There's been a mostly positive review on Steam for a while, and they claim to have hit an all-time high in players with the release of their new EU servers this year. I tried to play Albion about a year ago, and I, I couldn't get into it. I played it for a, about an hour, and it just didn't grip me. I pretty much finished the tutorial. I didn't like the art style. I couldn't get into the combat and I didn't see what all the fuss was about. And I, I quit. But people just keep recommending this game to me and it keeps growing. So I wanted to give it a proper try. I want to push past any reservations I have about the game and see what the hype is about. So I'm going to give a full review of my, my first impressions and see if this can win me over as a, as a brand new player. So let's start with the new player experience, you know, the first few hours. So it starts out with a character creator. And this is no Black Desert. This is more akin to, to RuneScape. No race, no class, very few options to really change your character. You, you just you pick your face, your body, and you, you start the game. That's it. The tutorial itself is pretty good. It's pretty solid. It teaches you how to gather, craft, gives you a basic horse, like a, like a mule. It uh, teaches you how to use the market board. And it shows you the main thing you really need to know about this game is how the gear works and that every ability in the game is based on your gear. So your weapons give you three abilities, and your armor gives you three abilities. So one from the helmet, one from the chest, one from the, the, the feet. So your class is your build, and you are what you wear, basically. That's, that's like the, the plug, that's what they say. This gives you a ton of possibilities when you, when you come to making your build, but it is very confusing as a new player of where to start. Once the tutorial's over, you, you pick a start in town, and you're pretty much dropped into the world to do your own thing which is the beauty of a, a sandbox game. You can do whatever you want. You can from here go and be a crafter, a gatherer, or go and level your bow, or go and become a really good wizard. But everything you do is tied back to one thing, and that's the fame and destiny board. So I do want to talk about that. This is basically your skill tree, but it's more than that. And from my understanding, every time you put on any piece of gear, you earn fame towards that gear, which levels it up on your destiny board. So if you start with a basic tier three melee weapon, which you'll pretty much have after the tutorial, after leveling for a while, you can equip a tier 4 melee weapon. So say you pick an axe, you can then go down the path of battle axes, or dual axes, or halberds, or scythes, or anything that sits under the axe tree. And then the more you use these weapons, the more you level them up. And leveling them up gives you a, a damage bonus, and it gives you new abilities. So progressing down this, 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 this one path of this big map, this big tree, gives you new abilities. And that's kind of where the complexity of things starts to come in. And that's the same for every type of gear. So what seems like a very simple game with just six abilities is very complex. And these tiers are tied to like the, the world. Every map in the, in, the, in the game has a tier. So the low level zones and the safe zones are like tier three, four. And then in the black zone, in the full loot PVP zones, it starts to be like tier six and seven. So you need to level up your gear, get stronger, equip better gear and go into these high level zones. And that's kind of what I wanted to do. That's that's my goal to get to these kind of end game ish zones where the full loot PVP is and fully experience it. So I wanted to buy some decent gear, some new tools, a good mount, some potions, all that sort of stuff. And it all is on the market for silver, like the in game, in game silver. And I had nothing. So I, I messaged into the world chat and said, I'm a noob, how do I make silver? And they someone said, go gather. I got invited into a guild of fellow gatherers who gave me some tips on making silver. I took all of these tips on board and set myself on a mission to not be broke. I was told to get a big ox which gives extra carry weight and eat pork pies to get a buff to gathering and get fat. So with a belly full of pork pies and some basic tools, I gathered. And the tiers of materials are tied to the zone. So as a new gatherer, I was mostly gathering tier 3 items, so I was in the low level zones where you're safe from PvP. And there's quite a few different gathering professions, but I was in the town of Limhurst, and most of the common resources around here was like leather hides from skinning, trees from lumberjacking, and then rocks from uh, quarrying, maybe? So I focused on gathering what was around here. And I mean, I mean, gathering is about as enjoyable as most games. It is what it is. The things that did make it more fun is that certain items can be enchanted, so they glow like green or blue, and harvesting them can make you a lot more silver. And then certain mobs can also be harvested. So you can fight like tree monsters for wood, big stone monsters for ore and stone, which is pretty cool. And now I had some silver. Time to play the game. <laughs> I knew nothing about combat, no idea what to do. So I just kind of rode around and went into everything I could find. And it's surprising how much actual content there was available as a solo new player. My favorite so far is definitely the mists. You kind of find these wisps flying around in the open world and they teleport you to the mist. And the best thing about this is 
only one person can go through here at a time, meaning you won't run into groups of players, which is really good when you're trying to learn the game. There are little camps in here and you can clear them out. And once you've defeated so many mobs, you can open a chest and they have different rarities, but you can get decent gear and silver. The best part about these mists though, is that you can get so much 1v1 PVP experience. And if you lose, you don't lose your gear. You just get booted out of the mist and back into the, the overworld. And you can get back into the mist in a couple of minutes. So this was incredible as a new player. It took me a little while to, to understand what this was, but as soon as I, I, I got my head around the mists, I, I loved it. You can, you can get risk-free loot and get good 1v1 PVP experience. And I tried to take pretty much every fight I could I could find, which meant I lost all of most of them. <laughs> Over time, I started to learn more. I started to learn about how to dismount people, cooldowns, the importance of like stuns and CC and, and mobility, and how much things like capabilities work and like how much different abilities on your gear can actually turn the fight, mostly from having them used against me. <laughs> And then after being in the mist for a few hours, I pretty much just lived in the mist for most of a day. And then I, I found the, the Abbey. So as you're in the mist, there's a chance for this, uh, this portal to spawn and it will take you to the Nightfall Abbey, which is an even deeper zone, even cooler zone within the mist. It's like, it's like another level. And this is like a castle filled with different rooms, totally different monsters. And every room you clear, you either get a buff or a chest. And after a certain amount of time, a big chest will appear on the map and it will be available to everybody and then anybody can go there and fight over it. I've only been in a few of these, but they are so much fun. <laughs> I would say I'm, I'm at about like 70 hours played so far and out of that, <laughs> probably like 20 has been in the mists. I don't know why, but I find these really, really enjoyable and it's so nice having a way to like gain good 1v1 experience, even if sometimes they're hella over geared to you it's still good to practice, right? You, you don't lose anything, especially when you're not in the, you know, the full loop PvP zones. After doing these for a, for a day or two, I got quite a lot of fame. I managed to level up like three or four weapons to tier five and find like what I kind of liked the most, what I, what I enjoyed. I definitely enjoyed melee more than uh, than the staffs and the, the bows. I love the axes and the daggers and the swords. They're all really, really fun. And I, I leveled up quite a few of them. On top of that, I made quite a bit of gold. I think I got to like seven or 800,000 gold managed to get a decent mount, like a swift claw. And because you don't lose anything, every single thing you do, you've got a repair bill at the end if, you, if, you, if you're falling down a lot. But generally, if you're just playing in these yellow zones, every single thing you're doing is earning you more silver. So you're constantly progressing your character, which is really good when you're new and you're still, you know, you're learning and you, you do fail a lot. And then after that, I just sort of went around to the town and just started clicking on things. And it, one thing that definitely caught me off guard is you can buy a personal island. I didn't even know this existed until I randomly found the vendor, but you can buy your own personal island and build farms, houses, raise animals, build crafting stations, and it's surprisingly well done and polished. I spent about, I think it was like 500,000 silver that I'd made from the mists and upgraded my island to a tier two. And then you can start building like farms, house. I built a house and realized it wasn't my house. <laughs> you can store stuff there, but you can hire laborers for it, which is a interesting system. You can hire these workers and they can be like crafters or gatherers and you build them a desk and a bed and make the house, you know, hospitable to them and they will have their happiness will increase and they will return items to you. So I was doing a lot of skinning. So I got a gamekeeper worker and he gives you a book. You go out, you do skinning, you fill the book and you give it back to him. And then he goes away for like a day and comes back with a ton more materials. The islands do seem very phone game. They do seem a little phone gamey. They do seem very time gated, but it is it is what it is, right? The workers take real time to return to you. Your crops take real time to harvest. So everything's time gated, but it's just an extra thing you can do each day to progress, I guess. But let me know in the comments if there's something I'm missing here or if it's even worth doing, because as fun as the island seems, I do feel like I'm putting quite a lot of silver into it to get all these workers going and to get all these things built. But let me know if I'm wasting my time. Okay, so island adventure over. Back to the grind. I want to talk about the solo experience. I, I went back to what else is there. I tried to stop just leveling in the mist because there's, there's other things out there. And I tried to do some solo dungeons. One of the cooler ones was the corrupted dungeon where you could be invaded by other players or invade them. Kind of when you get in there, you can interact with like the, the obelisk, kind of like Dark Souls. And then you have a chance to be invaded or you chance to invade someone else, which is, which is pretty good. I really like how many systems the game has where it combines like PVE and getting loot and progression and fame with getting good 1v1 PVP experience. 
I think this is essential for a good full loop PvP game to retain players. Yeah, it's something that games like, I play a lot of Mortal Online 2, which is another like full loot sandbox MMO, and they fail at this massively. So it's really nice to see it well done here. I, I, there are so many ways I've found so far to just learn PvP and still walk away with progression and loot at the same time. While in the open world, I also found a map which led to like a boss dungeon, and they seem probably the best thing for loot so far. The couple that I did gave like a few hundred thousand silver every time, which helped out a, a lot. But yeah, overall, I, I think the amount of content in these blue and yellow zones is surprisingly good. I was expecting the blue and yellow zones to just kind of hold your hand for the first hour and then limit you. Be like, okay, that's just like tier three over, now go to the hard zones. And I thought I'd be in the hard zones in a few hours. But surprisingly, you could play in these for 100 hours. You could play in these blue and yellow zones for a long time, risk-free, and there's a, there's a lot to do here. So I'd say if you're nervous about this because of the full loop PvP aspect, because of like the hardcore aspect, don't let it put you off. There is so much you can do here as both a solo player and a new player. Okay, so after about three to four days of just learning the game, I headed to the, to the Outlands. You can take a portal in the main city and it takes you to this, this little hub surrounded by black zones, surrounded by like the full loop PVP zones, the Wild West. And I learned a very important lesson that dying comes fast and often. <laughs> so yeah, I went out there with like my new mount and like my, my gear and I just got deleted. I got deleted in probably a minute. <laughs> so yeah, I, I went back to the drawing board. I still had quite a lot of silver, thankfully. So I decided to make a really budget build. So I was making like 50K builds. I was just going to the market, spending like 50,000 silver and getting a really cheap build so that when I inevitably got ganked, I wouldn't be sad. <laughs> So yeah, the black zones are, are intense. You have to have your guard up as you never know if a player is running up to you is going to be as geared as you are or if they're going to be in like tier six or seven really expensive gear. For the most part, I've just been clicking at them and inspecting them. And if they're super geared, I run away and don't get off my mount. And if they're like a similar level, I try to just take every fight. I try to just take every fight and I lost most of them. But yeah, this is 1000% more fun than the safe zones. The adrenaline of fighting for full loot has, has turned the game from being like a bit of fun, just kind of testing it out to being hooked. Uh, on top of this, every chest, every mob, every drop gives so much more loot than the, the safe zones. So the risk reward definitely feels worth it. I did a boss dungeon in here and it had like a 6,000 silver item in it, which is probably as much as I had total <laughs> from th three days of playing. I did a couple of myths and got a few like open world chests that had like a few hundred thousand as well in. And I'd say up to this point, I finally get the game. It probably took until here, like four or five days until the game clicked. This is kind of where I where I realized what all the hype was about and why it has so many players. And if you've tried this before and couldn't get into it, I definitely recommend trying it again and trying to get to this point. Try and get to the point where you don't have gear fear. You don't have the fear of losing whatever you've got because you can replace it easily. Go out in cheap gear and just try and experience that side of the game. The adrenaline of like seeing someone come up to you and trying to trying to bait, is there gonna be a fight? Is there not? The adrenaline of like seeing a rare mob and getting downed in the open world and realizing anyone could just ride by and, and finish you off is just makes the game more fun. And on top of that, loot. <laughs> The only other big part of content I don't think I've spoke about is the roads of Avalon. So I, I went in here and these are again full loot. And I'll be honest, I don't fully understand how they work. Basically you find a portal, the roads of Avalon and it says this is a full loop PvP zone. Are you sure you want to go in? Yes, you go in and there are other portals inside there on this road that takes you either to different roads of Avalon or to different random parts of the world. And while here there are very high level gatherables, there's like these hunts you can do. I don't know if that's exclusive to this zone, but there's lots of hunts where you can like hunt rare monsters. There's big chest to fight over and lots of like futuristic monsters here. It seems like there's a limit here too of only seven people. There's like a, a out of seven when you try and go in. And and it does feel while you're in here that it's fairly safe. I never got ganked in here. I never got jumped by like three people. The only time I found someone here, it was like a single player on his own, which is really good. Again, I can't stress enough how nice it is not to get ganked in every single thing you do <laughs> by, by a group. It definitely feels nice. I went in here with a friend who was also new and it was kind of tough in like tier four budget gear, but we cleared a bunch of chests. We fought lots of stuff here. And I'm guessing this is a good place once you've leveled your gatherers or, you know, if you can farm it well. But yeah, definitely an interesting place. I'm still not sure if like the roads are fixed or if you can map them out and travel between them or if they're just random. 
Either way, pretty interesting. So overall, let's just talk about Albion Online as a whole. At the time of this recording, I'm about 70 hours played-ish on the PC. I've got around 2 million silver, a bunch of gear, a chest full of stuff, and a few different weapons leveled. I've mostly played solo, a little bit as a duo, and right now, I have been completely surprised, and I'll say it, proven wrong at how good the game is. I've had multiple friends try and get me into this game over the last year and just say, we're all having so much fun. Come try it, come play it, it's so fun. And I usually just say, well, a lot of people say, the graphics suck. <laughs> it looks like a phone game. And I I, I eat my words. I, I still think it does. You know what I mean? It is, it is a phone game. It is available on phones. Um, but after putting the time in and learning how complex the combat is and how fun the PvE and PvP is, I'm hooked. I, I, I'm on board. I, I think this is an incredible game. And I was wrong to judge it based on just a first hour or just how it looks. So let's talk good and bad. One of the best things for me is the combat. The combat is so much more complex than what I initially thought. Every weapon and every armor slot matters. Every choice you make is important. If you're looking to, to PvP people, bringing the right helmet or cape to the right fight can save your life. Getting good with certain weapons can unlock certain skills that make you lethal in PvP or will help you clear faster in PvE. Maybe you'll unlock like a certain ability on your axe that gives you a massive AoE cleave. Maybe you'll unlock a certain ability that gives you like that gap closer to, to chase people in PvP. And given how many items there are in the game, there's a lot to learn. So the people who learn it really well and, and sweat this out and, and grind it out can be really good and get the rewards of that of being everything in the game that they can beat people at. Next is the, the content. And I was shocked at how much content there is. I feel like I've barely scratched the surface of, of what's available and the stuff I have done, I want to do more of. I haven't even seen like group bosses, group dungeons, any of the territory or hideout or guild stuff. Never, never touched it. There's like a content, continent, like faction system. Haven't even, no idea. But everything I've done has been really, really good. So the fact there's even more stuff out there to do now is surprising. The next thing that's surprising is the cost. This is a free game. This game is completely free to play with the option to buy VIP premium if you want to. Premium gives you increased drop rates, increased XP, and unlocks some other features like the, uh, like buying your island. But you get three days free premium for finishing the tutorial, and then you can either buy it or trade silver for it if you want to get more. I bought seven days premium, and it was like three pounds something, or like four pounds, which is very cheap. I think that's a very fair price for the amount of content here. And it's kind of like RuneScape in that once you get good at the game, once you get to end game, you can just earn your own, you know, premium silver in game and you don't have to worry about the price of it. So yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a good, good system. Now some negatives. One issue with Albion is probably the same issue with every single hardcore full loot PvP game. And that's people who fight down, people who like punch down. As a new player, you will enter the black zone in like a 50k, 50,000 silver cost gear set. And you'll be destroyed by someone with like a 3 million silver gear set just because they can. You'll be chased by groups of three, four, five people just because they can. <laughs> the open world chess, like the big events, if you're solo and new, it's a numbers game. You will get beaten by multiple people. And that's just how full loot games work. I'm used to it, but it is a numbers game and it sucks. And that's just a part of the game. Although there's lots of content to keep things fair, when you're in the open world, that's something to be aware of. Another for me would be the instances. I find the instances bit frustrating, constantly having to like bring up the map and look where the connections are. Like, okay, I'm in this zone and I want to go back to town. So I need to jump to this town and then to this zone and then to this zone. I find that a little weird. And I don't know, maybe that's because I'm new and I'm learning. And you can like be chasing someone and they can just jump instance and get away. Again, a little strange. Um, I mostly play like open world stuff. So that's taking some getting used to and probably something that I haven't enjoyed. But yeah, overall, my experience has been massively positive. I was ready to put this review out and just be like, I don't get the hype. Why are people playing this? But I see it. I see why people praise Albion so much. I see why it has so many players, positive reviews, and I would definitely recommend it. If you're looking for a full loot PvP game or a sandbox MMO with really good systems that are designed well, good gameplay and complex PvP, this is going to tick a lot of those boxes. But yeah, that's kind of everything I want to talk about. I hope you've liked this kind of first impressions review from a new player perspective, you know, going through it for the first time. I'd love to hear what you think of Albion or if you have any tips. Maybe I made some massive mistakes or missed some like big pieces of content that's 
really important. I tried to do this mostly blind. Like I said, I've got some friends that play it and I've just kept it completely solo for the most part to try and just find stuff myself. If I've missed anything important, do let me know. And if you like this style of video, I'd love if you could subscribe to the channel. I cover a ton of MMOs, ARPGs, and subscribing does help me out a lot. But thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.